Do you want to see how strong sewn loops are? Check it out on this episode of How Not to Highlight. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinks, and welcome to the first Slack Snap episode of How Not to Highline. We built a 222 kilonewton brake test machine so we can break anything and everything and do it in slow motion. We like to see what happens in realistic ish environments because, really, how many of us are highlining in sterile labs? Now, I'm not an engineer and I'm not a scientist. I'm just a guy with way too much stoke and a big dynamometer. Now, I don't use a big hydraulic pump like a normal test bed. I do what any good slacker would do. I use a lot of mechanical advantage and really big AM steel. Check out our episode that we made just about how my brake test machine works. Now, we try our best to compare apples to apples and eliminate variables, but this is not sterile science. We're not trying to end discussions with our tests, but to start them. Now, at the time of filming this, I've already done about 70 brake tests and plan on doing about 30 more in a few days. And I find that the more that we break, the more questions that we have. So this is a learning journey that you and I are going to go on together. I do make mistakes, but that is how I learn. That's how we all learn. For example, when I did my brake test machine video, I was told that my last section of my mechanical advantage was a 5 to 1 and not a 4 to 1. Sometimes I mix that up. However, that changed my math for the rest of the system. So instead of an overall mechanical advantage of a 32 to 1, I have an overall mechanical advantage of a 40 to 1, which doesn't really change the sample strength because my dynamometer is right next to my sample. I just have to be really careful when pulling that shit with my van. So I do do a lot of research. Yes, I said do do. And I ask a lot of smart people questions before I make an episode about something. And I do compare before each break session that my big dynamometer is accurate with my little calibrated expensive dynamometer, but this thing isn't going to break spider silk, amp steel, or BFKs. I do try to compare enough data that we learn something without it being so much data that only number nerds get anything out of it. So let's start off with an obsession that I have, sewing loops. How strong are they? How strong is each bar tack on the sewing loop? And when they break, how do they break? I like sewing loops because they're practically weightless. They don't slip. So I try to end up having them on my static side, the side that we don't tension, of all my high lines. You can connect sewing loops with a lot of things, like a stainless steel bow shackle, an aluminum shackle, a steel carabiner, or a delta quick link, or a soft shackle. Soft shackles, isn't that rope on rope abrasion? I get this question quite a bit. You can put a rope against a rope without there being an explosion. Now the rope on rope rule is based on ropes running over each other. You can put a soft shackle on a master point because it's not moving over it. That's the point of a soft shackle to replace the heavy stainless steel bow shackle. And you can also put these on sewing loops because nothing's moving over each other. Rope on rope is bad if you were to set this up for a rappel and then have your rope running through it. That could get you killed. Just like you don't put your leash directly on a high line. There's usually a ring between your leash and your high line because it's moving. But you can tie your leash directly to your harness because it's not moving. Now, how do I know soft shackles are safe on sewing loops? Well, I've only done it for years now, and all my brake tests are done with soft shackles because the less metal that I have flying when things break, the better. Now, I don't think the soft shackles on the sewing loops had any effect on how they broke, as you will get to see each one break. Now, the sewing loops that we tested are from my local source, Pete Swan, who was at the Lodi Jump Center and has now moved to Davis. I had about 10 different pieces of webbing adding up to about a kilometer long that needed sewing loops. And so that wasn't really practical to ship to Jerry and pay for shipping back to have him put sewing loops on it for me. I also needed a bunch of sewing loops done for the Slack Snap episode, so it just made sense for me to do it from a local source. A disclaimer is that I would always buy the sewing loop option if I were to buy some new webbing because it's more reliable, it's consistent, and it's predictable. 
Now, there are too many variables when you are getting something sewn by a local source to know how strong something is. And a sewn loop isn't exactly redundant, even though we're working on that. So you really have all your eggs in one basket. And if you don't know if it's going to work, mm, it's best to just get sewing loops done by slackline companies. So if you are going to get sewing loops done by a local jump center or a harness or a sling manufacturer, just know that your results might not be the same as the results that I got on this video. So Pete's sewing machine is not strong enough to push a number 138 thread, which is big, through three layers of webbing like the ones from Balance Community. So we did a single loop with number 69 thread, which is smaller, and tested the strength we got from each bar tack that we added. So we did some with just one and three bar tacks, and then the other ones we did with four, six, eight, and 10 bar tacks. And just as a disclaimer, my test pieces are not padded, but the pieces that I added to my actual webbing are padded to add longevity from wear and tear. So if you go to slackademics.com, under my section, I have a slack snap section, and you can see a chart of all the data that we have on this episode on there. So you can either follow along or reference it in the future. Now let's start with type 18 from Balance Community. The MBS on the Balance Community website is 35.6 kilonewtons. Now in order to compare apples for apples, we put type 18 in a weblock 3.0, which has the same diverter size as a weblock 4.0. And we got an RBS, a realistic breaking strength of 23.7 kilonewtons, which is 66% of its MBS. It wasn't brand new webbing, because how many of us are highlining on brand new webbing every time? Uh, but it was in good condition. So it broke um, behind the weblock, like most webbings do, uh, because the diverter lowers the breaking strength. Because the diverter that's used in the lab when they test for the MBS is like four inches around. And so it's um, not realistic breaking strength. So we're going to compare our sewing loops with the results we would have got if we just use a web lock instead. Now with type 18, we did the four, six, eight, and 10 bar tacks. Uh, when we did four bar tacks, we got 13.1 kilonewtons. And then we put the tail of that sample into a web lock, which is going to be stronger than these sewing loops, and broke the other sewing loop on the other side. Now you would think because it didn't break the first time that it would be stronger. But in this situation, it broke at 12.6 kilonewtons, which is a little bit less than the first test. Now, I believe it broke less because we stressed it so much during the first break test that it weakened it about a half a kilonewton for the second test. So then the next sample was six bar tacks on type 18, and that broke the stitching at 16.5 kilonewtons. And when we put it into a web lock to break the other side of the sample, that also broke exactly the same at 16.5 kilonewtons as well. Now keep in mind, my dynamometer is in pounds of force. That's the only setting it has. So on the chart here and in this video, we're doing kilonewtons because that is more universal among us slackliners. So our next test was eight bar tacks, and that broke at 20.2 kilonewtons. Now, in the process of breaking that, it broke the stitching on the other side a little bit on four bar tacks. So when we broke it again to break that second loop, it broke at 15.5 kilonewtons, and it lost a lot of its strength from being stressed so much. So now we're at 10 bar tacks. And our first sample broke at 22.9 kilonewtons. And there was an extremely loud pop. It jacked the stitching up on the other side. And it was very violent. Now we got 22.9 kilonewtons, which is almost what we get with the web lock on the RBS. We made an entirely different sample to thoroughly test this. And because the other side was so messed up and got 21.1 kilonewtons. And the webbing actually broke, not the stitching. 
So it looks like 10 bar tax is going to give us the full strength a sew and loop can give us on type 18. Now keep in mind that Jerry's loops are only seven bar tacks, but he's using a much thicker thread. And he said that all of his breaks happen at the first stitching. His webbing breaks, his stitching does not come undone. Okay, the next webbing we tested is Moonwalk. That is a Dyneema polyester blend from Slack FR. It's slippery AF. The MBS they have on their website says 35 kilonewtons which is just about the same as the Type 18, but it's ultra light, which is what makes it nice. It's a high-tech webbing. Dyneema is the same stuff that Amsteel is made out of. Anyways, it cannot be single wrapped in a weblock. So we have on the chart here, double wrapped for our realistic breaking strength, and we got 27.3 kilonewtons, 78% of the stated MBS. 6150. Check this out. This web lock is fine. And then this web lock, I had to figure out where it broke at. It broke from the back. So you can see here that this was the back of it and it broke behind there. The first test we did were, was four bar tacks and we got 13.3 kilonewtons. And then on the second test, after we put it in a web lock and double wrapped it, we actually got more strength, 14.4 kilonewtons. This webbing appears to retain the strength of each bar tack because it doesn't stretch at all, compromising the uh, bar tacks on the sewing loops. So our next test was six bar tacks, and our first sample broke at 18.6 kilonewtons. And when we put the sample back into the web lock to test the other side, we actually got more strength out of the other side again and got 20.4 kilonewtons for our second sample of six bar tacks. So eight bar tacks is when it starts to get interesting. Our first sample, the stitching broke at 22.9 kilonewtons. And then we put it into the web lock to test the other side. However, Check out what happened after it broke at 24 kilonewtons. 5,400 pounds. The way I'm holding this was the way it was in the web lock. If you look on the back side of it, it's melted to that piece, and this piece was attached to it. So it was like this and broke behind the web lock. And this, this right here, melted to this. So at 10 bar tags, our first sample broke at 31.3 kilonewtons, but it broke in the middle. So I couldn't put it in a web lock and test it again. Check it out. Look at how that ripped that apart. It broke it right in the middle and the sewn loops. And you saw how this was pinched. This thing is, uh, this thing is fine, but uh, the sewing loops, the stitching, there's no issues with it. Then I had another sample made and it broke at 30.0 kilonewtons and check out what happened. This one broke at only 67.50. Same 10 bar tacks. You can see how it just ripped out the stitching there. Um, it broke pretty much at the bar tack. And see here, maybe that bar tack weakened that section, whereas the other sample, it broke in the middle. So I put that sample back into a web lock and broke it again at 30.6 kilonewtons and check this out. Okay, 6,900 pounds. The stitching did not break, but it was about to go before this broke right at the first stitching see here that it broke nice and clean. So Moonwalk was super interesting. Our second samples were stronger than our first and at 10 bar tacks we got more strength out of the webbing than if we put it into a web lock. We were able to get 89, 85, 87 percent of the MBS whereas my RBS inside of a web lock 
would only get 78%. So that's very interesting on a low stretch, high tech webbing. Speaking of high tech, low stretch webbings, we broke some spider silk. This is a Vectrin webbing made from Balance Community that is no longer made, but I have a ton of it. And the MBS is incredible. It's 15,000 pounds or 67 kilonewtons. We did put it in a weblock for the RBS and got 42 kilonewtons or 9,550 pounds. And we double wrapped it because it's always been recommended to double wrap that webbing to find out that it's just about the same at 43.6 kilonewtons. So we're getting 63 and 65% when used in a weblock. It is pretty much the strongest webbing ever made for at least slacklining. Because this stuff is three bucks a foot and irreplaceable, we did one, three, four, and 10 bar tacks to test the spider silk. So we tested one bar tack of spider silk and got 4.6 kilonewtons, or about 1,050 pounds of force from just one. Then we tested three bar tacks and got 9.3 kilonewtons on our first sample, which is more force than we've been able to put on a high line since I started testing it with our dyno. Our second sample broke slightly lower at 8.67 kilonewtons. So then we did four bar tacks and got 15.8 kilonewtons, which shows each bar tack does give us strength, but it's not linear. It's not like we get 1,000 pounds per bar tack. And then we did 10 bar tacks, which got us 32.7 kilonewtons. And then our second test was 31.8 kilonewtons, which is only 49 and 47% of the MBS. Now, 10 bar tacks have been great for the other webbings, but I think we would have an exception here on the spider silk. I think I could add more in order to keep increasing the strength to at least get what the weblock gives us, which is 42 kilonewtons. I'm about 10 kilonewtons shy from what a weblock gives. So if I were to rig the space net at GGBY with the spider silk, I would probably use weblocks on all the points and not the sewn loops but these sewing loops are perfectly fine if I'm using the spider silk as a backup line. So our final webbing is the classic tubular nylon webbing. This is interesting because the MBS is 20 kilonewtons and the RBS, when we put it in the weblock, broke at 19.1 kilonewtons and that's 95% of the stated MBS. Maybe that's because it stretches so much or maybe because it's from a different manufacturer and they test it different in a lab. I don't know. So we did four bar tacks and we got 12.6 kilonewtons on our first test. And then on our second test, we got 10.6 kilonewtons. So we have the same issue of the second test breaking at a lower force because the nylon stretching messes up the stitching. Then we jump straight to 10 bar tacks and we got 17.1 kilonewtons, which is 85% of the MBS. And the second test we did with the 10 bar tacks is 16.2 kilonewtons, which is of course a little bit less than the first. So tubular nylon held quite a bit of strength considering it's a weak webbing. Okay, so we just covered 32 brake tests on sew and loops. I tried to make it as quick and painless as possible while being somewhat entertaining. However, these are very important to know if they're gonna hold because all your eggs are in this basket. It's not very redundant. You can add a loop here, but that's not to make this redundant if it breaks at the first stitching. So if something were to fail with a loop you were to get done at home and you were to fall on your backup line, and your backup line has the same loop made from the same place, you could die. So I do recommend, if you have the option, to go with a Slackline company's loops, because you know they're reliable and consistent. So the Balance Community website says that their loops hold 80% of the strength of their webbing, and I asked Jerry about that, and he said about 20 kilonewtons. And I also asked Slack FR, and they said their loops hold about 15 kilonewtons. Now that I've done a bunch of brake tests, I feel like a blanket number for a loop um, may not be super accurate because um, each webbing is so different. The idea is that it's a minimum of 20 kilonewtons or a minimum of 15 kilonewtons, which is 
perfectly fine for a high line. So with those results, I'm pretty happy with my loops. The Type 18 gave me, this is not Type 18, it's flight, gave me 21, 22 kilonewtons, so that's great. And the Moonwalk and the Spider Silk gave me 30-ish kilonewtons. So that's pretty good considering that the slackline companies are also getting around those strengths. Now, if you like having this extra loop to be able to clip to something else other than your master point, you could always, if your place only does two layers, do a loop and then have another loop on your tail. I opted not to do that because I made sure this is bomber, individually tested all of my pieces and made my loop big enough that I can fit multiple things into it. If you are gonna get loops done at home, uh, you can send me some samples. I'm more than happy to break test them. Please message me before you do that so I can tell you what I need in order to test them. Um, I'd love to see what kind of results we get from different places. If that's not feasible and you don't have a dynamometer, you really should check each loop before you ever go up high. So worst case scenario, you can go to the park, pull on it really hard with your pulley system and many friends, make it tight AF and uh, bounce walk it because you're not going to get more force than that when you highline. You could also err on the side of caution and get 15 bar tacks, I think 20 would be overkill, um, instead of just 10. Uh, Jerry, he has only 7 on his and I don't know what uh, the European companies put on theirs. So this slack snap thing is a journey and not a destination. This will not be our last loop episode. We will build off of this episode the next time we do breaks on some loops.